Monday, December 5th, 2022, public hearing for the City of Tampa's Architectural Review Commission. Welcome everyone. I'm Susan Klaus Smith. I'm the chair of the commission and I'm also an architect. If you're here to present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentation, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation and your project should be presented in the following order. The site plan, the elevations, architectural details, and wall sections. The staff will present their staff report and we will then ask for public comment. Following your presentation, the commissioners will be asking questions in the same order as the presentation. When coming to the microphone, please state and spell your name clearly if you are here to speak for or against a project. Your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments because three minutes goes by very quickly. Following the public comment, the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal and the public hearing will then be closed. The only comments which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based on the city ordinance, chapter 27 of the city zoning code, excuse me, the design guidelines, the secretary of interior standards, the historic preservation development review or HPDRC comments, and the testimony given at the public hearing tonight. Please note that the ARC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility. Owners and or agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do silence your cell phones and I'll ask my fellow commissioners to introduce themselves starting on my left. Good evening. My name is Stephen Sutton. I am also a registered architect. I also hold the architectural historian chair for this commission. I'm Brent Taylor. I'm a building contractor. I'm John Prokop. I practice architecture. And with us tonight, we have legal um, or city attorney Kamaria Pettis Mackle. We have Alexis Guzman. We have Elaine Lund. We have Dennis Fernandez. And we have Ron Vila. And then, if I could please get a reading of the minutes um, into the record, approving them and entering them into the record for November 7th and November 9th of 2022. I move that we accept as presented the uh, meeting minutes for the Architectural Review Commission public hearing for the dates of Monday, November 7th, 2022, and for Wednesday, November 9th, 2022. I second. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand in the king. So, Aye. Motion carries. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Dennis Fernandez, Architecture Review and Historic Preservation Manager. Welcome to this evening's public hearing and welcome to our applicants and to the public who are joining us. Uh, I did want to uh, present the uh, administrative approvals for the month of November into the record. We'll provide that to the clerk as part of the permanent record. And to let you know, there has been a couple changes on the agenda since uh, it was the information was sent out to you. We have a couple of continuations that Ron will be reviewing in just a moment that will uh, shorten the evening's hearing uh, list. Uh, with that, I will uh, turn over the disclosure of conflicts of interest and ex parte communication to our legal counsel. Good evening, Commissioners. Kamari and Pettis Mackle from the City Attorney's Office. Will the commissioners please state whether or not they have any conflicts of interest regarding any of the items that are on the agenda? No, 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 no. Additionally, will the commissioners please state whether or not they've had any ex parte communications regarding any of the items that are on the agenda? No, I have none. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Ron Vila, I'm staff with Historic Preservation. Under continuations, we have one that's reflected on the agenda this evening, and then we have another one that I'll go into. We're going to need two separate motions. Uh, they're, they're being continued to two separate dates. The first one that's on the agenda is ARC 22-255 for the address of 307 East Amelia Avenue. This re request came in by the agent to continue to January 9, 2022 excuse me, January 9, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. If we get a motion for that, please. 
I move to uh, continue ARC 22-255 at 307 East Amelia Avenue to the January 9th, 2023 public hearing. At 5.30. At 5.30. I'll second that motion. All in favor, please say aye and raise your hand if you so. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And the second continuation, we just received an email this afternoon as ARC 22. Dash 362 is the second item on the agenda tonight. And that was requested by the agent. Uh, the address is 2303 North Jefferson Street. They are asking to continue to January 11th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. If we get a motion for that one, please. I move to continue ARC 22-362 at 2303 North Jefferson Street to the January 11th public hearing at 5.30. I will also second that motion. All in favor, please state aye. And raise your hand if so aye. Aye. Motion carries. Moving down the agenda, we're ready for the swear-in. Ms. Guzman, I'll swear everybody in that wishes to testify. Everybody who wishes to testify, please stand up and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you'll be giving today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do not. We are ready for the first agenda item, and Ms. Leno will give us a photo presentation. Good evening, Commissioners. Elaine Lund, Historic Preservation Staff. Um, the first item on the agenda tonight that we will be hearing is case number ARC 22-403 at 5505 North Branch Avenue in the Seminole Heights Historic District. The um, existing structure on the property is a contributing uh, structure to the Historic District constructed circa 1926. And the request is for an addition to this primary structure and um, the new construction of an accessory structure with a few site improvements. Um, moving to the photo presentation. On your screens, you should see the Seminole Heights Historic District map. The subject property is in sort of near the middle of the district there. It's um, in sort of a, a bluish color, I believe, on your screens. And um, Moving on to the 1920 Sandbar map of the subject site, here we are looking at it um, on Branch Avenue in between Comanche and Mohawk Avenues. Um, again, sort of highlighted for you in green, you can see that it's a two-story wood frame um, residence and that there was at this time an existing accessory structure on the site. This is the present day aerial, again showing the property on the east side of Branch Avenue, um, just north of Mohawk there and south of Comanche. This is looking at the front or the west side of the subject property. Moving to the south side, you can see a few of the um, the windows, the low pitched um, roof with the wide overhangs, the um, extended gable brackets, the casement windows, several defining features of this house. And this, this is the north side of the house. And the rear. Um, Adjacent to the subject site, this is the house, I believe, directly to the south. And then the house to the north. And the house across the street. This is looking south along Branch Avenue. And then looking north along Branch. Behind the site, there is an alley. Um, I believe this view is looking south in the alley and then turning around facing the other direction in the alley. 
That concludes the photo presentation. So at this time, I'd like the applicant to come forward and present the request. Hi, um, my name is Tara Williams. I'm the homeowner at 5505 North Branch Avenue. Um, as Ms. Lund stated, we're uh, requesting a small addition to the rear of the stru uh, primary structure, which will be um, mostly for uh, extended kitchen. Which way does this project? This way or this way? There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, so the primary structure ends here. We're adding about 250 square feet to the rear of the property only within the fenced enclosure. And then we'd also like to propose a small 780 square foot two-story um, accessory structure. Um, as Ms. Lund already stated, I have the ele you know, elevations of the existing home um, with our, this elevation being the one that does not change whatsoever. Um, the rear elevation, we'd like to extend the roof line to mimic the front porch. Um, the side elevations will largely remain unchanged with the exception of what you may see from what we add to the back. Um, we will be removing just a small portion of the um, roof in the back to allow for a new gable um, for that addition. The floor plans, here's an enlarged view of the plan is just going to extend the kitchen out about eight feet and add a master bathroom. Um, we intend to keep the existing windows um, on that elevation as well, these windows, and reinstall them. Um, and it's in a new location and these locations here. Um, for the accessory structure, the um, first floor is going to be just a shed space. We won't, won't be parking cars or anything in there. It'll just be garage space. Um, and then the second floor will be a small home office. And the proposed elevations for those, um, this will be facing west, facing towards the home, facing south, um, north, and east. Um, and then we did receive some comments from um, the city with requesting the specific details that we intend to reuse. So the casement windows we intend to reuse on the primary structure. The ones that we are taking out, we're going to relocate it to a new spot on the primary structure. And for the accessory structure, we intend to try to match the casement windows, have them custom fabricated to match the primary structure. Um, on the accessory structure, also matching the attic vents, the corner gable brackets, the exposed root, um, rafter tails, and then we are proposing at the gables to have a gutter um, where it's coming into the yard, so to match the existing primary structure where we have our gutter and our um, gutter straps aligned with our rafter tails, and then the same existing roofing, metal roofing, um, same profile and same finish. Um, I think that's generally it. I do have a wall section, yeah. This is of the accessory structure. This is a building section. Oh, sorry. So just, why don't you start at the top and just tell, okay. me, tell me what the materials are going to be like all the way down. So, um, on the accessory structure, like I said, the, um, primary roofing material will be uh, extending seam uh, metal roofing to match the color and profile of the primary structure. Um, we intend for the first floor to be built out of CMU and then wood frame from then up. Um, all of it should be clad with wood siding to match the profile of the existing st primary structure also. Our primary structure has um, mitered corners and not corner boards like some of the other houses in Seminole Heights so we intend to match this um, we are not intending to be on piers but a slab on grade um, so this detail won't exist on the um, accessory structure but it will exist on the rear of the addition to the primary we'll intend to just um, continue this detail on the primary um, 
And then the, like I said, the casement windows, we intend to match the primary structure. Um, I'm not sure if we can get the same hardware, but that's the intent is to get some. We do have some um, left over from the previous owner that we intend to reuse. And then corner brackets to match um, our existing corner brackets that we have here. Um, this structure, we also um, intend to have exposed rafter tails, just like the primary structure. Make it so you can read it a little better, I guess, sorry. Okay. Yep, this is, f oh, this is for the accessory structure. Do you want to see the? Yeah, let's go to the, the addition. The addition. First. Sorry. That's right. Not the last um, addition. These are all the existing. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, what was the thing? I seem to be missing the elevation of the addition. I have the sections. These are just the sections of it. Sorry. Um, does it have the demo elevation in the section? Okay. For the accessory structure, those are the elevations. I don't have it with you. Are these your proposed? Um, yes, at least with that. This is proposed. Okay. Really, I don't have that sheet printed for some reason. Or I left it. Oh. This is the proposed, though. Uh, do you want to show this? Or? This one, yeah. Okay. You can kind of walk in here. Okay. Now. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the proposed elevation for the primary structure. As I said, we were going to reuse the windows that are already existing, um, and then we're gonna have to um, just relocate them from where they, these two were a little bit further out. There's one over here, and we're gonna kind of squish them together and put them all in the kitchen area. Um, and then this gable that we're proposing, we'd like for it to match the front of the house where the porch gable is, something similar to that. conclude our presentation then. All right. Um, staff will present the report at this time. Uh, Commissioner, staff found this application to be consistent with the Seminole Heights design guidelines. Um, there were a number of conditions in the staff report. The majority of those were requesting clarification on details. So I uh, would suggest that um, any detailed information that you 
uh, would like more information on that you um, ask that of the applicant, but otherwise um, staff is satisfied with the, with the, with the, uh, excuse me, with the application. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to open the um, hearing for public comment. If there's anyone who would like to come forward, speak either for or against the project, you may do so at this time. Looks like no one is, so we'll go ahead and close that portion of the hearing and we'll begin asking questions. And I'll start with Mr. Pokal, my side, my right. Um, it, it seems to be fairly well done. Uh, I have a question though. Um, it's you use the word match and match and match everything, mm -hmm. and it's typically. Um, well, let me ask you a question. What is what distinguishes the addition and the new accessory structure from the original house? How is somebody supposed to tell that it's an addition and that it's not original? I mean, I'm kind of hoping that they don't. They aren't able to tell at the end of the day. Um, uh, my intent is to have the same siding like reused. We are going to have to patch a little bit on the side, so I'm hoping that we'll custom mill the same profile for the part that's in addition to the house and then reuse the window. So, I mean, I guess in theory, you would see where the roof line comes into the old roof um, and you would see that ridge. But ideally, from a material standpoint, I'm hoping that you're not able to really tell the difference between the existing and the new. Okay. I don't have any other questions. You mentioned the roofing is going to be standing seam. So I'm asking, is it going to, because the, the picture you showed looked to be a 5B crimp, and maybe I looked at it wrong. Um, and that might just be, sorry, a terminology issue for me. Um, but I would agree, it, now that you're saying that, it does look like it's crimped and not standing seam. Um, yes, it is. I agree. It looks like it's crimped. Yeah. So to clarify, it has those corrugations. for our purposes, mm -hmm. your intent is to match? My intent is to match this same roof okay. profile, yes. Then you did, I agree with my fellow commissioner, you, you did say match a lot. Mm -hmm. So on the accessory structure, are you looking to use, as well as the addition, I should add, wood siding in lieu of other materials? Well, I did ask our contractor to price wood siding for the um, uh, accessory structure. For the primary structure, we're intending to reuse the siding to the greatest extent possible and then mill wood siding to match. Okay. So I know that there may be some issues on the corners where it comes in that they may have to make new. Plus it's getting a little bit longer than the existing building. On the accessory structure, I did ask them to price that. And then if we need to um, look at like a, a cement plank, that's also an option. Hello, <clears throat> I have a few questions about uh, your materiality uh, for this project, uh, items that really were not touched on at this, uh, in your initial presentation. Um, first thing, let's talk about what you are doing uh, for your porches, uh, your overhangs, uh, the ceiling materials. Uh, what are you looking at for, for those kinds of materials? Um, for the addition to the house, or, um, the overhangs we're planning on still matching the same as what the porch has, um, like the existing front porch has. So, so it's a beaded like material? It is. Um, yeah, some pictures of that. And then, and maybe you can see it here. Actually, yeah, you can see it in this photo here. In this one. So this is the existing front porch area, so we have these rafter tails with a beaded um, soffit under that. Mm -hmm. So we intend to match that on the overhangs on the rear and then, as well as the accessory structure, honestly. Um, 
And then for the ceilings of the accessory structure where it has a small porch area, we intend for that to have a beam. You also have a small porch area in terms of your addition on your primary structure as well, correct? Um, you have an entry door on the back side. We have an entry door, but it really just allowing that to be an overhang from the roof and not necessarily like a, a porch. It's more like a stoop. I understand. Uh, I also note uh, from your original plan of your building, you have a fairly extensive uh, deck step situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a, can you explain to us what you are doing with that with respect to your addition? The decking right now, we have an existing deck back there, so we were thinking we would probably have another deck just in the same area. We have, honestly, we could make it smaller. That's kind of something that we've been evaluating. Right now, what we propose is kind of a larger deck with just coming right out of the, the back door and then just steps on all sides going so down. essentially the same scale, the same concept. Exactly. Uh, brand new exactly uh, so you're not really picking up the existing and moving it no that decking i don't intend to reuse because it's i don't think it's original to the house anyway um so we probably will rebuild that deck new am i also to understand uh, that uh, for your uh, accessory structure that you have a, a fairly substantial covered area uh adjacent to your stoop that's also i want to say maybe uh, uh, an exterior uh, shaded or sheltered area yes um, is that also going to have the same uh, roofing ceiling treatment as well yes we in, well we intend for that to look like the existing porch ceiling mm -hmm. which has just a beadboard ceiling um, and trim so it does not slope its flat ceiling on the existing porch um, <coughs> in, in consideration of uh, uh, my uh, fellow commissioner Prokop uh, there is another item uh, for your, at least for your uh, accessory structure uh, that you may want to consider in, in differentiating the new from the old. Uh, both your beadboard um, uh, soffit area uh, and your uh, siding could have a, a different face, if you will. Okay. Uh, in, uh, as an example, uh, this looks like a fairly narrow uh, 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 lap siding mm -hmm. uh, if you had something a bit broader uh, if you will taller wider uh, that would th make a differentiation between the two structures okay in terms of the something something to consider also that same consideration uh, the beadboard that's on the soffits again on your existing structure it is a narrow beadboard a wider beadboard might be more appropriate as well um, in conjunction with the will a wider lap siding uh, to help differentiate between the two different structures. Other than that, all the rest of the window details remain the same, all the rest of the coloration remains the same, uh, this, uh, the roof edges, the roof detailing remains the same, but just a couple little changes like that can, can make that pop, that differentiation pop. Okay. So that might be worthwhile. Now, I understand the moving of, of the existing windows. What are you doing with windows on your um, um, accessory structure? For the accessory structure, um, I, I think we're probably gonna get custom made windows so that they have a similar um, look to them. The way our house, um, most of the details are, they all have this, oh, for it to the screen to show up, sorry. <laughs> All of our windows have this cross in mm -hmm. them with the muntins. So I think we're gonna have to get these custom made because it's kind of an important detail to our home. It carries through the inside of the home also. Um, so my intent is for that to still be the same. I don't think I can buy those just off the shelf. So um, we'll probably reach out to some historic um, window companies in order we can make something like that. In a similar vein, what are you doing with doors? You have your kitchen door? The doors we, um, right now we have glass doors in the back of the house. They're just a, a style and rail mm -hmm. door. Um, so we'll probably do something similar um, for, the, for the kitchen area. And then for the accessory structure, I haven't selected a door yet. I'm probably just gonna do like a panel 
panel door, like a six panel door. Um, we don't really have anything like that on our existing house to sort of mimic either, so. I take it you also have the same selection situation for, I wanna say your barn doors, your garage door, access door as right. well, that needs right. to be coordinated. Right. Lighting, that's my last item here. Okay. Um, I noticed that there is a, uh, a number of new fixtures that are being involved both for the addition on the primary and for your accessory structure. Mm -hmm. Have you sourced those at this time? We haven't finalized the selection of those fixtures yet at the moment. We are proposing just sconces at the doors so we have some light. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, but we haven't finalized those selections now. Another item for coordination. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Um, do you have a site plan? Yes. view also yeah I, if you can if you have the actual site plan that shows yeah. the ground plane and what's going on there that would be better and if we could zoom that out a little bit actually that's smaller oh, no, that's good you can't see So for the addition, um, are you going to be um, adding any air conditioning units for that square footage? Probably not, right? Yep. What about the accessory structure? The accessory structure we are, and the intent is to have um, the condensing units in the back. Okay, are they the are they the wall mounted? There's good, yes, exactly. Okay. Um, and then any other uh, panels like electrical panels that kind of thing where would they be for the accessory structure they will be in the same area we'll probably create like a small utility area for that um, just in the we're proposing in the rear just so that we're not having to look at it from um, the primary structure right understood um, do you have an existing and a demo plan for the primary structure yeah. that explains what you're removing Sorry, everything's in a different order now. Um, actually, let me give you the enlarged one. It'll be easier to read. This is the enlarged um, demolition plan for the primary structure. So the intent is to remove a large portion of the existing kitchen wall and then just remove the siding from the exterior wall in the bedroom and then this wall will remain and just remove this window okay. and cut in a new door opening here. Um, and then for the proposed plan, it might be easier to... This wall is the wall that's remaining. We'll reclad it. Um, okay. um, so, and then, I'm sorry, this wall. And then we'll reclad it as an interior wall. This is the new exterior wall. So this portion of the existing kitchen gets demolished. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, I, the reason why I wanted to see this was to see how the bay window was being treated in the corner. And I can see that you're stepping in, correct? Yes. So that that Yeah, remains. so we can keep this corner the same as it exists. Okay. Because I'd think it's going to get messy if we go all the way to the end. Yeah, and that would actually be our preference, I think, as a okay. commission, is to see that allow the bay window to retain its position in the historic fabric. Um, you had mentioned that you were going to reuse some of the windows at the rear, and the elevation that you showed showed three windows that look like the same size. So can yep. you explain which windows you're actually putting back in the elevation? So the existing windows, um, this window here and this window here are the ones that we're relocating. Okay. This one is going to get relocated also, but not here. Um, this one will get relocated to the side. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have a new window built um, between those two to okay. match. Okay. 
Yeah, that was going to be my question because if you were just translating, then yeah, they wouldn't match up. That with what you one from the bedroom is a little bit bigger, yeah. um, so that's why we're proposing to put it on the side um, in here because I don't want to lose that window. Um, so okay. I just want to keep it on the house still. All right. Um, so so right. Um, you had mentioned that you would try to uh, match on the accessory the overhangs, but in your wall, if we could look at the wall sections for the, or the building sections for the accessory structure that you had up before. Are the overhangs for the accessory structure intended to be the same depth as the primary or are they smaller? Ideally, but I think we need to verify those overall dimensions in the field also, but we also have a limited amount near the setback. Um, so I think it's gonna be kind of a game between either moving the building a little bit to allow for that or reducing the overall overhang. Um, so I don't have access to measure them so I'm right. intending the contractor to take those overall dimensions so just as a note and we can discuss it but um, in 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 line with some of the questions from my fellow commissioners and some comments already made typically historically the accessory structure even today if we were designed it's diminutive to the primary okay so you wouldn't typically detail it exactly the same and that includes your overhangs okay so just a thought there and that might help you with your concern um, as well. I'm happy to make them smaller. I just, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just revisit with your okay. designer and your contractor. Um, you had talked about the windows and you talked about the doors. The garage doors, I did think I saw on one of your elevation, or the shed doors, we're calling them garage doors, but the shed doors, mm -hmm. you had an elevation with them on there, correct? I did, yes. So what's being shown there, is that the intent of what you'd like to see on, that, on the project? I mean, I'm open to... If it's a question. <laughs> if that's what you want, that's fine. We're just, we just need to understand what the thinking is that's because kinda we have we're, to react to what... Yeah, that's present. where we're thinking at the moment, but I also know there's probably like a sourcing issue at the moment too. So that's kind of what we're looking for, I guess, if we can source it. And so can you explain the operation of these as you see it right now in your head if you, if you can't just, get them? Yep, they're going to just buy part um, okay. doors so they won't flip up or, or they won't be automatic. Yeah, we're okay. just using it to basically mow the grass. Okay. Um, <laughs> hardware, I didn't see any information on hardware. Do you have any of that information today? We don't have the hardware selected for the door hardware. The window hardware for the primary structure will reuse Yep. Um, and then for the accessory structure, we're going to try to source something similar so that they still open out with a crank. Um, but again, I don't have that hardware selected at the moment. Um, if we could look at the porch, so I think it's one of the lower the porch for the um, accessory the unit front of it or yeah okay. so um we're calling that a porch does it indeed have a a deck or is it a ground plane and then you're paving it it's a ground plane that we're and paving. what what is the material you're putting on the ground um we're looking at just having some like stone pavers right now um okay. to match what we have on the front walkway okay And then the columns, if you could please explain or describe what material, and then if you have um, maybe in one of the sections behind the sheet, um, a closer view of the intended detailing for the columns. Yeah, the only column, this column here is the only 
real freestanding column that we have, um, which we don't really have on our property. Our existing columns sit on these mm -hmm. small knee walls. So these two columns here, we intend to sit on a knee wall just similar to this. Um, and again, clad this with wood, either wood siding or the cement board siding and wood trim to mimic this same detail. So they'd be boxed out. They'd be boxed, yes. And is that framed in terms of a box out from the existing? Um, these are new. No, 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 I know, but oh, if these, you're intending on matching those, are yeah. those then framed? These actually... Um, They're painted as if they have some kind they of... They have trim on the corners, um, and then, but that's it. It's, I think it's an exposed column, um, okay. and it's just trimmed on the corners, um, and the backsides are stained. And so. then for the free the freestanding column that you have on the new porch? The freestanding one, I think what we were intending to do is just build a wood base box out around it and cap it similar to the cap here. Um, okay. Because like I said, we don't have that condition anywhere else. So if we can just try to mimic what's similar to this, um, but this will be clad with siding and this will be more of a flat panel. Okay. And then at the, um, let's look at your building section behind the elevation again, just really quickly. Um, can we zoom in to the, the, where the siding ends at the slab on the lower? Here? Yeah, if we could. Um, I can't see where we're looking. Okay. I'm going to let you tell you what's right here. <laughs> Thank you. So it looks like the siding will, sh will stop short of the edge of the slab and uh, the masonry joint? Yeah, I think so. Okay. We, um, so we'll probably extend it down just slightly um, depending on how this grade comes up to it, but it'll stop a little bit short. Okay. That's it for my questions. Any other questions of the applicant? Gentlemen? No? You have five minutes for rebuttal. If there's anything you'd like to add or respond to anything. I don't have anything to. At this time? Yep. Okay. All right. And we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and we will discuss the case. Okay. Um, you know, what, basically what I brought up being that, that um, I think uh, it's not well um, understood um, by an awful lot of, of applicants and people that own historic properties, that if you're adding on to it and if you're building a, an accessory structure to it, that the words used in the design guidelines are similar and compatible, but not exact duplicates. And I think you, you brought up, uh, Stephen, the, the changing possibly the dimension of the siding, changing the dimension of the overhangs, um, changing certain small details of the, uh, the addition and the, um, the accessory structure so that you can tell what the original house was where it ends and where an addition begins. So it's com the compatibility is important, um, similar is important, but there should be a, a distinct difference between what is historic fabric and what's new. Because if you just duplicate the historic fabric, it cheapens the historic fabric. It, you, you can't appreciate the original house design if everything is duplicated. Um, so that's part of the design guidelines that I think it's important to, to pay attention to. So you can do everything you talked about, just change the dimension of the beadboard, change the dimension of the siding, um, a few other details like that I think is, would, would go a long way towards making the addition distinct and the accessory structure distinct from the original house. You know, the 
I can even see the point where, uh, you know, one approach can be taken for the accessory structure, and maybe, uh, a, a, if you will, a closer match to the materials on the addition to the primary. That you know, for as an example, where this addition abuts to the existing structure, perhaps a separation board, a vertical board, you know, demark existing view, and then the exact same side and come in would be a perfect demark. And I, I, I can see that also because the existing house doesn't have vertical corner boards or, or, or boards, so adding one at the addition is, at the, that is the thing that makes it distinctive. And it shows that it was added on because that's not copying the exact detail of coming to a mitered corner. So I can see that, yeah. Overall, I think that this is a, a really a marvelously well thought it's, out it's, project. It's very well done. Yeah, uh, it, it fits. It fits well. Yeah, it fits well. I, I just, I guess, I to repeat that. You know, I just don't think a lot of people understand that we don't want things duplicated mm -hmm. for additions and, and, and new structures. Um, and even going to the extent of that, the the box out columns you know, for the accessory structure could be a slightly different dimension than the ones on the main hall. They could be, yeah. I think the fact that the whole structure has the potential to have different um, dimensions for trim and you know the siding and all of that allows it to already relate that Stand it's different. Yeah. And I think the fact that there's a freestanding column where there are none in the original primary structure is another character feature that, you know, does yeah. state it's not original. On the vertical um, board, we, we often suggest that and we've seen it done successfully. I think that is a possibility. Um, the fact that they do allow the bay window, the bow window to um, to reside yeah. in its own plane. And it's, uh, yeah, the addition is set in from the faces of the building, you know, exactly. in, the, in the, I guess, I don't know, the east or west or north or south, but the way we're looking yeah, at it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, but they're set in, that's the proper thing to do. Um, I, I think it's it's all fairly well thought out, it really is. Well, the, uh, and let's commend them for trying to reuse the, the materials that oh, they're yeah. removing, because so yeah. many come in here and don't. Yeah. Uh, but when they remill that product, it's going to make it a little bit smaller than it is currently right now anyway. So it the vertical it's board actually may help differentiate. Because it's not going to match up. It's, it's not, not going to match have, perfectly it's anyway. Have to so it's actually like, it's, yeah. it's, it achieves several things there from a construction standpoint, yeah. as well as aesthetically it differentiates. Okay. Are there any other thoughts or... The only concerns. other thoughts I have is uh, let's make a rundown um, uh, I do for think coordination items. There are some things that were noted differently from what um, we heard from the applicant. One was the standing seam roof versus the 5B crimp that needs to be changed out. I think some notations about um, some of the elements on the site plan should be noted on the site plan going forward, like the pavers. Um, right. Any any pavement, any sidewalk that connects the right, existing new. house to the new exactly. um, addition. Right. Um, we have the uh, coordination of the new doors and their hardware, lighting, right. and uh, the coordination of the uh, accessory roof overhang and garage door shed doors. Right. Yeah, the shed doors. You know, I could almost see a, a, a rolling barn door in that location. I mean, that would. I, be absolutely whatever ideal. it is, I, I felt. Oh, oh, just a single. I a felt single what leaf. was yeah. shown on the elevation was historically appropriate. I could imagine it being a couple of different operate operable right. conditions um, if they continue in that vein. Um, but that's the, the general right coordination, path. you know, yeah. for the you know for yeah. these accessory structure doors. So the there's more detailing uh, that needs to go in. Um, specifically the columns on the accessory structure, I think. Both the freestanding and the other one um, that's at the stairs. Um, I didn't see any details for the rear stair, which you know, we, we hardly ever get to see those anymore, it seems. So those need to be clarified.
political board at yeah. the slush condition. Anything else? Yeah. And I have doors, hardware, shed doors, overhang dimension, vertical boarded addition, and column features. Pavement. Pave, pavement on site plan. When making the motion, be sure to call out whether it's on the accessory structure or the primary addition. Right. We have a motion to entertain or? He touched it last. <laughs> <laughs> I move to uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing for ARC, I don't even have it in front of me, 22403 at uh, 5505 North Branch Avenue with the following conditions that final details for doors, hardware, shed doors, the overhang dimension, uh, vertical board at the addition, the accessory structure column details, and pavement on the site plan be approved by staff. Uh, because based upon the finding of fact, uh, the proposed project is consistent with the um, Seminole Heights design guidelines and the city of Tampa for the following reasons that it meets the design guidelines, the Secretary of Interior Standards, and uh, all appropriate uh, city code, including Chapter 27. I'll second that motion. If we can just ask the applicant really quickly, we typically ask that you understand what the conditions that were put forth, and you just need to come forward. Yes, yeah, so I understand we just need to add additional information, and then we can resubmit that to the staff Correct. for approval. Okay. Uh, so, have a did I get a second? Yeah. Okay. All in favor, please state. Aye, and raise your hand if you think so. Aye. 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 Motion carries 40 to zero. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. Moving to the next agenda item, which is ARC 22 442. This is for the address of 1820 West Chaton Avenue. This is in the Hyde Park Historic District. The current zoning is RS 60, which allows up to a 900 square foot accessory structure which they're requesting this evening. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction for an accessory structure with site improvements. Briefly going through the photo presentation. The primary elevation faces Jaton. This is a corner parcel. It's on the corner of Jaton and Albany. In the 1929 Sanborn map, you see the accessory structure that's here. That one has been removed. There is another accessory structure in that approximate location, which is non-contributing. The agent has requested, and the owner has requested to have that uh, removed, and we could uh, approve that administratively. Just one last thing, looking through the Sanborn map, that you see the blue and the yellow on the structure from 1929. The blue ind indicates uh, masonry construction and the yellow is framed. So as I go through the photos, at the, the main level of the house is cladded in stucco, which is indicated in an original structure, an original feature on the structure. This is the vicinity map, just to show the approximate location and the overall uh, landscape of the historic district. The red indicates the local district, and it's in the western corner of the local district. This is an aerial shot. There is an alley that runs to the rear of the property. It won't be part of this request, but this is the primary structure which faces north. As I stated, it's a corner um, uh, footprint. It's on the corner of Albany and Chaton, and this is the approximate location 
that will be repurposed. This is looking at the primary structure, the front elevation. Here you can see the masonry, the stucco over the frame. As well as the other elevations as well. You see the lap siding that are absent of corner boards. You see the double hung one over one windows. This is looking at the abutting structure on the east elevation. And moving back, back to the uh, subject this evening, once again, just to call out uh, the masonry over frame, the metal roof, and then the, the knee brackets that are existing with the gable vent. So looking down the street, this is looking to the east, and back towards the west on Jatan. Moving back to the primary structure. Uh, also to delineate, there's a and all to the south. That is non-contributing. Just once again, focusing on the non-contributing accessory structure that will be removed. I was oriented and on the site right now. And just the, the relationship from the back of the house to the accessory structure and their proximal location. That concludes the photo presentation and I have the owner address the board. We're having some technical difficulties that are kind of preventing the larger monitors from showing, but you've still seen that on your monitors in the front, and we'll we'll kind of be working on it for the next few minutes, but we can go ahead and start the presentation. Good evening. My name is Michael Sork. I'm the owner of 18, 1820 West Jatan, uh, and on the phone that he's just listening is my agent, William Dobson. Uh, he came down with COVID. Sorry. Oh. Might be having questions while we're in recess. I don't think so. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Just do what you can. Is William on the phone? Yeah. Hang tight.
Are we good? All right. Yes. We're in. Let's All right. try again. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Michael Sork. I'm the owner of 1820 West Jaton Avenue. Uh, on the phone, or is helping me, is my agent, William Dobson. Uh, he was supposed to be making this presentation this evening, but he has COVID. So I will try to do my best to uh, give you uh, the plan that we are doing. If you, recall, if you recall, we met in October and asked for a side yard variance, which was denied. The plans we are presenting tonight have been modified to, re meet, to meet all of the setback requirements from that meeting. As Ron said, we plan to build a 900 square foot two-story ancillary structure on the property with a garage and a workspace above, along with some site improvements, including new fencing, driveways, et cetera, landscaping. The first slide uh, is a somewhat of a duplicate, if I can get it on here of what Ron uh, said. And we will be removing, which has been approved, the non-conforming non or non-contributing garage structure that was currently there. That will be removed and this shows our current existing site plan on the left and the new site plan on the right which you can see incorporates all of the setback requirements that were uh, in chapter 21 of the city codes. The next slides will detail the elevations of the proposed new structure. If I can get it on here. Okay. Showing the north elevation, the west, east, and south elevation of the proposed structure. Um, we also have details of the specifications of the uh, wall sections that's required, which again, and the various materials that will be used in building the structure which includes uh, smooth hardy board siding, weather shield wood windows, um, and everything else that you see on here, as well as trying to uh, mimic the current main structure of the home on the property. As well as the trim detail, uh, again, will be similar to what is on the main structure. This is some of the material that will be used or that have been spec'd out for the proposal. To give you sort of a visual impact of what we believe the new structure will look with the existing structure, here are some views from the northwest of the property showing the new fencing and driveway. Here's a side view from the west showing the various materials that will be used, including the existing um, metal roof that's on the existing structure as well as what will be used on the ancillary structure. On the notice on the um, south side of the building, there'll be an area for trash cans, the AC units, and any of those pool equipment, that type of information with a six foot high ceiling keeping, or six foot high wall keeping that uh, from out of public view. Here's a little bit from the southwest as to what the structure will look like with the various details. as well as we plan um, a living wall on the side that's facing the main building on the property. This is from the Northwest view. And this is East. South. Finally, 
from the Northeast. So while all of these are the different directional views of what the proposed structure will look like, again, I think uh, it's important to note that the design specifications and the things that we've used that are detailed on the, on the presentation here, uh, again, according to your comments, they're not exactly the same as the existing structure, but they coordinate, uh, we think, very well with it. So uh, that's my three minutes. Uh, I'll open it up to questions. Commissioners, Actually, before we get into yeah. two questions, we'll go to staff's finding. Uh, this application is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines from the plans that we reviewed um, October 26th. Under conditions on page three of your staff report, if this project is to move forward, a design exception for the overall height is required, and that process should be started and approved before they get uh, a permit to move forward. Um, the bullet items that were addressed on page three are, are the hardscape materials. They indicated on their drawings and their renderings that it would be concrete with a pattern to be historically correct. Uh, the next item was a fence design, which was indicated on the rendering as well. Final placement of the mechanicals, which were discussed this evening by the owner. And the windows and doors, they talked about similar um, windows and doors. Uh, when I spoke to the agent, they were going to be cladded, not uh, original wood windows, as the primary structure has, and they will be a one-over-one one window with single glazed doors. The selection for the exterior materials on the upper portion, which is frame, he indicated would, would be hardy. The primary structure has lap siding, wood lap siding, and below there's a stucco. Um, the pattern is to be compatible with the, the pattern on the primary structure. He had indicated the north elevation had some articulation that's going to be part of a living wall that's there. That's going to be the cables that will allow the vegetation to grow. And just to complete, to go over the comprehensive list of material items, the roof material, it's going to be a metal roof, uh, which is a 5V crimp. The exterior wall materials were the uh, lap siding, which is hardy, and the stucco. The garage door is a clopay door that I spoke to, to the agent with. And I'm elaborating a little bit because the owner was not engaged in the process. I met with the um, applicant, his rep, many times, and he was unable to come, so I'm trying to assist the owner uh, moving forward. And I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the trim pieces uh, on the corners. Uh, there is no uh, corner boards. It's a weave or a miter. And then the casing around the windows will uh, replicate the casings around the uh, primary structure. The lighting was a gooseneck, and the hardware is to be period appropriate. So uh, that concludes this portion, and I'll be here to assist the uh, owner moving forward. Thank you, Ron. We'll open up the uh, hearing to public comment. If there's anyone here for or against the project who would like to speak, seeing no one, we'll go ahead and close that portion of the hearing. And we'll begin asking questions starting on my left. Thank you very much. Um, sir, <clears throat> um, can you uh, pull up your elevation, please, for your street side? of your accessory structure. Street side. You're just wanting this or the site plan? Uh, so this would be very fine as is. Um, I got it. I have a sore spot uh, with your uh, uh, garage door elevation. And it relates to the fact that uh, your second floor windows are centered on their wall, that your garage doors aren't. There is a misalignment between the two. Now, am I to assume that the area to the left of these garage doors is a stair to your second floor? Correct. We do not have detailed floor plans for, right. for your interior, so we're making some guesses here. So for practical purposes, those doors cannot slide over to a more central type, type of a situation. Um, would you consider moving the upper windows? 
I could. You mean which one? I mean, yes. I well, mean, there's no. You know, there, versus being well, centered. You know, to one where, is functional, and the other one is very symmetrical. Right. And the 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 two have to jive with one another, just like how your fenestration on your uh, primary dwelling has a certain relationship between what's happening on lower levels and and not necessarily repeat, but a relationship to what's happening on the upper levels. It was just a, a, a rule of thumb that people just, you know, work towards. You also have a, a good relationship towards your openings on the other elevations. It just is one place, and it happens to be the public face <laughs> of your vision right. where, where it really sticks out. And I'd like you to have a chance to, you know, rethink what's happening here so that there is some manner of alignment to maintain some manner of symmetry that's happening, at least with the openings themselves, not necessarily with the relationship to the walls. So are you suggesting that the upper windows um, center with the garage door? I'm, as thinking, I'm thinking I'd go in that direction because it's, the garage doors aren't going anywhere. Right. No, that, uh, again, I don't have any issues with that. That is, that is my, uh, my, my big sticking point. Uh, I, uh, as a general concept, I understand what you're doing with the stucco on the, on the ground floor, the differentiation between the materials. Um, you're not gonna re recreate the masonry of your existing building. Right. That you, know, you have now that differentiation at that location. You've got your clabbered on the top, which works out really well. I see your, uh, your, 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 your board separating the two. Right. Yes. And it all seems to be relatively well scaled to the nature of, of, of this structure in itself. Yeah. Um, can you pull up your site plan, please? Sure. Can you run down for us on your site plan what you are doing with your fencing and particularly uh, what is new and what may be existing? It will all be new uh, okay. starting at the corner of the garage. There's an existing fence by the pool, uh, but we will continue that fence over uh, and then have a gate that goes on the garage. So this is new fencing here. And then on the street side, it will be all new fencing from the garage to the existing structure along that line. And we're to assume that it's going to be a wood fence or a wood At this time, yes, we are. Fence. At this time, we're uh, anticipating it to be wood. You know, board and rail, as we see right. on your Correct. Corner. Thank you very much. That is all I have for the moment. Thank you. You scared me at the beginning. Commissioner <laughs> Taylor. I've got a question for staff. Uh, you mentioned a height variance. Does that come into play tonight at all? That would be a condition if this is to receive final approval. That should be on your condition list. And right. so it'll be 22 and a half feet. So that was my next question. We'll see. The right. building is going to be 22 and a half. Is that what I? Right. And that allows, um, that's what the design exception. And what is the allowable? 22 and a half. So what's the need for the? There is no well, variance, but they well, you would still. Yeah, it's a design exception to the height of the accessory structure. So the allowable is. Currently, the allowable in the city of Tampa is 15 foot in height. In all the historic districts, there has been an allowance to be historically compatible to go up to 50% more than the 50, 15 foot in height. So that reads out to 22 and a half. Okay. So the design exception is from 15 foot, which the code reads to be allowed in the historic districts to 22 and a half foot. And that is a joint review through land development and historic preservation. Right, thank you. And for clarification, the drawings show wood windows, but in staff, staff report, you mentioned clad. Can no, they're wood clear? windows. They will be wood windows. Yes. Okay. They're weather shield wood windows. And that's all I have for now. Um, I'm curious, what is the relative 
difference between the height of the new accessory structure and the height of the main house. Do you have those dimensions? I do not have the height of the house, but it's slightly smaller. Which one is slightly smaller? The ancillary one, I believe. The ancillary one is shorter than the, yes. the main house, because the renderings, of course, you can't. Right, you can't they see actually it. Actually, it looks taller. Right. Um, okay. Um, that was one of my main concerns, is that the accessory structure not be taller or even equal to the main house. Correct. That it still needs to be shorter than the main house second floor. Okay. Um, I'll go back to my fellow commissioner. The asymmetry of those garage <laughs> doors just drives me nuts. Um, one thought I had is that is it possible to mirror the stairs and put the door on the other side and therefore you can center the garage doors. I, I, I don't know what the plan is or how the plan works. We, we're not, we're not, you know, that's not a part of our purview. But that, if that could happen, then you could center the garage doors and have them symmetry and centered on the elevation as well as the upper windows on the street facing side. Right. I just we will, I, I will take that under advisement and okay. I'll work with William and maybe we can move it so that, because again, I'm very much into symmetry, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, would, I wanted the doors, the garage doors, uh, yeah. garage doors. So possibly we can move how the door works below yeah. and, and make the, that happen. The garage doors want to be centered. Also. <laughs> right. They really do. I, okay. Um, <laughs> All right. We will, <laughs> we will work on that. I, um, we talked about you know uh, uh, the, the not matching, not duplicating, but right. something similar. So I would assume like the height of the the siding, the exposed face of the siding might be slightly different than yes, it'll be the very hard to match and the all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think that's it. I think that's all I have. Great, thank you. Hello. Um, where is the AC unit for the new structure going to be? Developed? It's not depicted on here, but it will be behind the fence on the um, facing the alley. Okay. Um, and then you had talked about the fence, but not the gate. It, will the gate be the similar material and yes. detail? Okay. Um, so we need to get into that. Um, can we look at your building sections or your wall sections that you had up earlier? Is there one that shows the entire wall? I'm looking for a foundation view. So I don't believe we have that. Because this is the only wall section that I have. So um, do you know, I would assume your slab on grade and yes. the the uh, wood frame sits on the slab on grade and that the siding will stop at some point. Well, it'll be stucco to the... Or the stucco, that's right, yes. that's right. Never mind. Yeah, it can. Um, we'll just need to see a detail for staff. Um, then, um, if you could please, could you um, pull up the elevation for the front or north Elevation of the primary structure, please, for me. Of the primary structure. Not the ancillary, the primary, is this? Yeah, just the front elevation. Nope. Your street elevation, the north. I don't Your entry porch. We'd have to have staff pull that one up because I don't have that. Ron, can you pull that up really quickly for me, please? Can you repeat what you were looking for? The primary elevation, north entry. In photos? Yes, please. Okay. So this one's also relevant, but I want to look at this one first. So um, if you look at this, you can see that historically this property has asymmetry. Mm -hmm. um, the other elevation, the side street elevation, there's also asymmetry. Um, 
so when we're discussing the accessory structure and the asymmetry, certainly for some of us it's going to cause a twitch, but <laughs> there are also ways <laughs> Will you to allow me to build it three feet wider? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are certainly ways to detail the project, and that includes where you place your fence and your gate, uh, working with your designer to help offset some of that feel, but you have historic precedent in your own property. So um, there are some in one camp and some on another. Some of the stuff is gray, and um, I just wanted to point those out. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, other than that, I had no other questions. So, is there any other questions from the commissioners? No? You've gone through all the materials? Um, I did. Mm -hmm. I thought I did. Oh, you know, the one thing I remember. I don't think uh, I just so it. you know, they, uh, <laughs> William told me the main house is 28 feet, so this will be two 20. feet. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you for that. Um, the uh, the details for the porch or the balcony at the rear, do you have drawings for that? Do you know? Uh, the only drawings that I believe we have are, let me see, I thought I saw one. There's a blow up, there's a blow up detail. Right, I, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> you haven't been sworn in. Well, for some reason, it doesn't it's seem. On the porch. I don't know whether this one's... It's on the same page as the door handle and the roof. Ah, uh, okay. Here it is. Down in the corner. Sorry. The Perfect. Really if we can zoom into that, please. I don't know that I can zoom in. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'll get it. That's still too hard for us to read. Can um, you read through the notes there? It's just, it's just the font. Read like through the notes. It's a, it's a two by six no. top no. rail. He can't. No, it's a two by six top rail. If that's what you're looking for, the two yes, by six. Yes, all those notes. Please. Right, two by six top floor, and uh, I don't know the spindle four looks. Can you, um, Kamaria Pettisnackle from the city attorney's office? I, it seems as though you have your phone on or right. with the that I don't. We don't know. There's right. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And he's supposed to be only texting. Four by four. Four by four. Um, the spindles. If I can read that. That's clearer now. So if you just move it to the corner. But it's still hard to read that one. It, he said it's four by four corner posts and two by two pickets. And then a bottom rail. Right. And then the, um, so you have an exposed joist at the bottom and then the bracketing. Okay. All right. Thank you. That was it for my questions. Anyone else? Any other questions for the applicant? All right. You have five minutes for rebuttal. Sir, I, have no have re I have no rebuttal other than I'll work on trying to get symmetry on the, uh, although. <laughs> I'll do the best I can. All right. <laughs> Thank you. We'll go ahead Thank and close you. the public hearing and we'll discuss the case. Um, other than a few first. details, I have no real issues with this project. It's really come a long way since the first time we saw it, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I, I don't even know that I have a problem with the asymmetry. I mean, another. Mindset on that would be add another window if possible, which would center up over the garage door a little better. I think he's got multiple options there. It needs just uh, to be revisited and coordinated yeah, I, in some fashion. I don't. I, again, I, I think that's something that's going to come down to personal preference. And like she said, you you have something right there on the house that kind of points you in a direction. So, uh, you know, to the eye, is it a little off? Yes, it is. But it also gives it a little added quirkiness to the property that already has a little bit of that. So um, other than that, it seems pretty straightforward. I didn't see it the first time it came through, but to the 
seems to go right in line with, with, with the home itself. I agree. I agree. The new, the new fence cleans everything up, too. <laughs> yeah, not having to deal with that, uh, the variance situation goes a long, long, long way for this. I agree. All right, in terms of any conditions, um, the only thing I really thought I heard was uh, making sure hardscape materials are submitted. Um, the gate design and the fence design are duly noted. Um, and then also the mechanical unit needed to be noted on the site plan. And then of course the final selection of windows and doors. Oh, and the garage doors probably, because I did, I saw an elevation, but not a manufacturer. Or actually it was called. Oh, it was, it was, was cold play, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. oh, yeah, Never mind about that, but doors and windows are not it. No, and then the balcony, when well, we had the elevation. Um, if the board is, Kamaria pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office, if the board is inclined to grant a certificate of appropriateness, um, just a reminder that additional condition, according to staff, was uh, approval of the design exception. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Do I have a motion to entertain? Or? One, two, three. I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 22-442 for the property at 1820 West Jetton Avenue um, with the following conditions that doors, windows, hardscape, AC unit location uh, be uh, coordinated with staff and that also a design exception is received for the height limitation. Um, because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines in the city of Tampa, um, the Secretary of Interior Standards, and Chapter 27 of the city code. The, the, the design exception has to be Okay. Um, let me amend that to say that that the design exception has to. I'm by by saying received, I meant that it was I, they were granted. It. Okay. Um, but that yes, they needed approved design exception. I'll second that motion. So you understand the conditions placed? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all in favor, please state aye and raise your hand, indicating so. Aye. 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 Motion carries, four to zero. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners Ron Vila, staff at Historic Preservation, moving to the last agenda item, which is ARC 22-501. This is for the address of 1807 West Watchers Avenue. This is in the Hyde Park Historic District. The primary structure dates back to 1922, and it is contributing. The zoning is RS60. The request this evening is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction in addition to the primary structure with site improvements. Some past action has taken place on page three. On your staff report in, in 2000, there was a request for a green tree removal. There was an addition to the primary structure. And there was also an approval for an accessory structure that uh, was not built. So with that history, moving to the photo presentation. Uh, this is an interior parcel that fronts Watrous. It's in between Albany and Fremont, and there is an alley that runs east-west. If you look at the uh, rectangle of the footprint of the primary structure, you see that it's, in, it's encapsulated. Uh, there are no protrusions at that time, just to the rear that has a porch. We know it was a porch because it's indicated by a perforated line as the front porch is. This is looking from above at the structure, looking at uh, as it faces watchers. 
This is looking at the primary structure with the, this is a craftsman style home with the upper level. Looking down the drive aisle, there is a origin, uh, bump out here currently in the back. That was part of the addition in 2000 that I wanted to call out. This is looking down the vehicular drive. And just a little tighter as it terminates into a fence. This is looking back at the front elevation, which has a beautiful porch with the two gables. That is very uh, period appropriate for the Craftsman style. And just another one focusing on the front porch, some of the details on the porch. This is looking at the abutting structure to the west. Moving to the uh, property in question, this is the east elevation. Oh, excuse me, this is the west elevation. You see the fence as it terminates here. The primary structure goes from the porch all the way back, and then there is a, that porch that was uh, indicated on the Sanborn map was probably enclosed a while back, and you see how it bumps in at that time. So this is the west elevation with the upper floor uh, intact. This is looking at that same elevation, uh, very well taken care of house. You have the lap siding, the trim that's applied over the siding, and period appropriate trim with the proportions. Looking down the side, this is going to receive an addition, a one story addition in the front, and then a second uh, addition, which is a two story on the back. That is what they're requesting this evening. This is looking at the upper level. And this is the structure on that west side that abuts. Moving to the rear elevation, you see the massing and the uh, craftsman style features that are indicated here. And just the rear yard, the rest of the yard, this is the deck that exists there and just a small structure that was not part of that 2000 approval. Uh, that concludes the photo presentation. This time I'll have the agent address the board. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Francie Masano. I represent GM Construction, the general contractor, and the owners, Charles Adam and Lauren Marie Howery Bembasad. Thank you so much for considering our project. I would like to address all of the staff findings um, that we received um, that had concern about approval for this project, and we do have a presentation. So um, first, let's go to the site plan. So with the site plan, you can see that um, this is the two-story structure that's in the back that is proposed. It is directly on the back of the structure. We are not impacting the original house at all other than for um, some penetrations and opening from the existing wall into the addition on the back of the house and the side of the house there will be a little bit of impact of the roof of the second story cockpit. Um, on the driveway side, uh, during HPDRC meeting, we did take into consideration all that they said and we revised the drive in order to um, fit the requirements of transportation. Um, some of our, we're gonna have the same issue with our wall sections. Um, but construction, this is a wood frame house, construction is going to use the term match existing. Um, here are the floor plans. So the existing, there is, um, that back porch was an, uh, enclosed and a kitchen and family room was created. This bump out on the drive side is currently two feet and we are proposing to bump out two more feet to add this, the first floor of the, um, of the rear addition, the uh, one-story addition is over here on the side, and you'll see that in the elevations. On the second floor, currently we have um, what Ron likes to refer to as the cockpit. Um, we did have a hardship in dealing with that cockpit because currently the floor-to-ceiling height is only seven foot three. Um, and we did not want to touch the existing roof. So in being able, this is the same floor plan as this, but all we did was add that second floor and create a penetration 
through the, the existing wall into the addition, but the addition, because we need a, um, we could not have the, um, the roof ridge lower in the addition because of the uh, restrictions of the existing floor to ceiling height on that second floor. So I'd like to point that out during this time. So with the elevations, you can see um, from the side elevations that the uh, proposed addition is two feet higher than the existing cockpit. And as I said, we would have loved to have brought that down a little bit, um, but the existing floor to ceiling height in the cockpit is very restrictive at seven foot three. Also, there is a pool. Let me go back. Oops, I lost my Let me go back. We also have a pool in the back, so we were restricted as to how far back we could bring the addition in terms of um, adding the additional necessary space. Before we continue, I'd like to add, Ron said that this house was about uh, 1922. In my research, I saw that the house was constructed in 1917. And I think perhaps some of this, the small size of some of the spaces on the interior, which have definitely caused us some difficulty in making sure that we uh, work through and according to the guidelines, we did have to um, stretch things a little bit in order to get some ceiling heights. Our client's six foot three and you know he can reach up and touch the ceiling. So when you have children and you lift them up, you don't really want to have the restriction in height. But we did match the floor to ceiling height on the first floor. So when you come at the, the uh, first floor and the addition first floor, both on the side of the building, um, let's see that would be the next page. So the, uh, on this page, all of the floor to ceiling heights do match on the first floor. It's the second floor where the addition, the floor to ceiling height we brought up a little bit more in order to accommodate. So on the elevations, you see the existing, eleva existing elevation, front elevation, and the proposed uh, front elevation. I'm going to show you some renderings that we did, which will sh uh, demonstrate the fact that you don't even see the, um, the two-story addition in the back. And the bump out on the, I believe it's the east side of the house, is very fitting with the craftsman style bungalow. So I'm going to refer to some of our, let's see, okay. We have some exhibits to show, no, that switches over. Um, all of the examples that we're going to show are within um, a half mile radius of the proposed project. So here is our proposed, here's our project and we feel that all of the things that we're proposing do meet the um, guidelines. And we like to stress the word guidelines because they are guidelines because the main goal is to preserve the historic nature and especially uh, of the neighborhood, especially when you're driving or walking down the street. So here is our rendering. And when we, when we did um, take shots of the rendering, we did our best to match a six foot height as if a six foot person was standing right in front of the home. And as you can see, you can barely see the two story addition in the back that the existing historic structure will remain exactly the same and be of primary importance um, with this project. So here's another view. So here is what is currently there, a photograph that was taken. And here is a rendering, and this rendering was taken at approximately six feet in height, someone who's approximately six feet in height, and you can see that um, the addition is so far back that you're not going to be able to see it from the street or barely be able to see it. So what I also did was there are a lot of, there's a lot of um, landscape and a lot of structure in, in the houses that are on both sides of this project. But I did remove the existing uh, palm tree just in case there was a question of uh, the landscape hiding the fact that the design did not meet appropriate guidelines. So we're not trying to hide 
any um, deviation from the guidelines by landscape. This is existing, but this is what it would look like if that palm tree were not there anymore. So with the demo plan, as you can see, we're really removing minimal things within. We do have to do some alterations to the stairwell because right currently it is extremely narrow and steep in order to get up to the second story. Okay, so here's the roof plan. So as you can see, most of the existing structure and roof will remain. This is the, um, the roof for the second story. So what the only thing that will really be impacted is how that the end of the cockpit will um, dive into the new roof. And then this is a um, shed roof on the one story addition that's off to the side. So with the staff findings, um, it says the one story, staff finding number four is one story addition on west shall be positioned towards the rear, rear and subordinate to the historic structure. So what that means is it, it can bump out, but it needs to be subordinate. So in our design, we feel that we have done our best Danny's here supposed to be helping me shuffle through papers. I'm not giving him a chance. But here is the addition that we propose, the one-story addition. So we feel that that is in, um, that uh, follows the guidelines. So we did provide a few examples around the neighborhood. As I said in the beginning, that all of our examples are within a half-mile radius. This can is you, an 815. I'm sorry. Yes. Can you? the last one can you push it up so we can see the full page that you're trying to show us sure and I would trying say to get all push, of our information push it up in. a little bit higher let's see oh there, there we you go. go how's that thank you okay okay so this is 815 West Watros and as you can see they have a similar landscape but they also uh, bump out on the side I did take a picture of the SketchUp model um, from this angle just to show that yes, the landscape and some structures of the neighboring homes do impact the view. But essentially, the historic structure will be of primary importance when everyone drives down. So the question of um, a bump out on the opposite side, on the drive side, this house is flipped compared to what our project is, but uh, 2113 West Watros, they have a two-story, uh, they have a two-story bump out on the drive side. So at 2012 West Deckel, they have a six-foot bump out. Here's the drive, and they bump out six feet. Um, currently, the, um, the back porch bumps out two feet, and we are proposing to bump out two more feet for a, a, a total of four foot bump out on the drive side of the home. So this is um, an elevation of 2012 West Deckel, which has similar proportions and a similar Craftsman look to our project. And as you can see, they have a bump out on both, both the, I believe this is the east and the west side, and they also have a second story cross um, type addition on the back. And this is the home that is under construction. So that's the same home of the drawings that I showed. Okay, so we did compile, just to show you that we're not adding a huge amount of volume to the house. So the existing two-story res residence is 1,240 square feet. We're proposing to add another 300 square feet for the one-story addition and another approximately 229 square feet of um, first floor space on the back and an additional little over 700 square feet on the second floor in relation to the cockpit. So part of the issue of having to go higher with the roof in relation to the existing cockpit. There are several examples in the neighborhood. Um, this is 901 South Rome. Before and after, 
where um, an addition does go higher than the existing structure. So at 1311 West Morrison, you can see the roof plan. There's an extensive roof plan where it brings um, an addition to the rear of the home, but the primary importance is definitely in front of the house. Um, and similar to our project, we're putting our project as far back at the property as possible, so it's not as obvious. So here's just another simple line drawing of this previous of this previous roof plan. So as I had commented before, the pool, we did have to deal with the fact that there is an existing pool, so bringing this um, addition further back instead of up was a restrict restriction. Twenty nine oh one South Rome. So this addition is higher than the existing historic structure. And I think at that point, I think my um, presentation is concluded. If you'd like to ask any questions, I was trying to stay. We do have a lot of information. We'll move on to the staff report and then we'll have a round of questions. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Avila, staff with Historic Preservation. I'd like to start with, uh, I believe the additional elevations need to be shown, uh, each elevation, and then with the wall section to include it to look at the materials that are being presented uh, this evening as well. Having said that, moving to the staff's finding that this project is inconsistent with the Hyde Park Design Guidelines and the Secretary Interior Standards with the drawings that we reviewed on November 16th, 2022. Moving down the list on page four of your staff report is that the submission should be revisited to be consistent with the Secretary of Interior Standards for new construction pages 90 to 93, which I attached to your staff report. And I put, wanna put some of the language into the record as well. On page 90, which uh, addresses new additions to historic buildings, about halfway through the, the first paragraph, it dives into new additions should be designed and constructed so that the character defining features of the historic building are not radically changed, obscured, damaged, or destroyed in the process of rehabilitation. Moving to the second bullet item uh, is the demo plan, which was submitted this evening and the roof plan with the next bullet item, so we appreciate the additional information that was requested. The next bullet item is the one-story addition on the west should be positioned towards the rear and be subordinate to the primary structure, which you saw some evidence for that, and it has been uh, a pushback. The next bullet items are, are a little more severe. Uh, we get into the, the massing and building form, which is discussed in the Hyde Park Design Guidelines on page 69 and 70, and they're also attached to your staff report on page three, the lower section of your staff report, uh, page three. The massing and build of form, uh, the proposed request overpowers the scale and proportions of the contributing sh structure and shall be revised. When you look at the two-story addition towards the rear, and then you look at the rear addition um, in elevation and in perspective, Usually the additions are added to the cockpit on the front and the cockpit is usually nestled into the roof line. This one goes from side to side and then it usually cascades down into a one-story addition. This one, the two-story addition kind of abruptly ends and um, we could discuss that elevation. To reduce the overall massing of the second story and total height of the second story and keep it, the current ridge height expressed she went through the examples of some of the challenges that she had. The ridge of the new addition is engaged to the uh, historic ridge. That ridge is a landmark that we take very seriously and the uh, Secretary of Interior Standards and the Hyde Park Design gu Guidelines address that landmark and all uh, efforts should be taken to respect that. 
Lastly, moving to the scale of the Hyde Park design guidelines, again on page 69 and 70, that additions should be subordinate uh, to the footprint. And just moving back to the second story addition and the first story addition on the rear, that overall massing kind of compromises the cockpit and is a little foreign to the craftsman style as you look at that, at that rear elevation. Um, I misspoke, there's one more uh, condition that I want to address as well. It's very important for the view corridor through a porter uh, The The agent showed some examples uh, looking down the ribbon drive, but I don't believe any of them had a porter cachere. That porter cachere lines up the drive aisle as you continue down to where the automobile rests in the accessory structure. Uh, as I indicated on the Sanborn map, there was already a, an addition on that side that bumps out two foot. The Sanborn map shows that that side goes straight back. So in 2000, when there was uh, an approval granted, it limited that bump out to be two foot. Now they're asking for two more foot. So as you look down that corridor, and if the ribbon driveways continue, they're gonna have to meander, meander around that addition as the vehicle continues to the accessory structure. So that completes the staff's findings on page four of the staff report, and I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. Um, we'll now open the hearing to public comment. If there's anyone who'd like to speak for or against, and seeing no one, we'll go ahead and close that portion. We'll begin asking questions with Commissioner Taylor. I heard the presentation on the, the height of that addition um, and, and, and the reasoning behind it, but I'm going to ask the question just because I feel like it's going to be a large portion of, of this. Um, has there been any thought to bringing that height down, and would you be willing to, to listen to some of, you know, or, or look at that a little more seriously? We, we have taken a great deal of time in working with the owners. Um, the existing cockpit, um, in terms of being able to supply air conditioning and lighting and other things, um, the existing cockpit, um, the air conditioning supply does come from below, so there is minimal ceiling height. Uh, we did explore vaulting the ceiling, but in terms of, no matter what we do, we're going to be very limited with the ceiling height with any addition in if we are even to match the existing cockpit height because of the floor to ceiling because of the height limitations of that cockpit we would we tried we really did but then the addition um height interior is going to be even a little bit lower if we are to supply air conditioning and other systems to that portion of the structure. So we, we did our best in order to really restrict the um, additional height above that cockpit. I think, I think because this house is pre-1926 that there, you know, that cockpit is lo typically lower, is lower than all the other typical cockpit floor to ceiling heights. So that was a very big challenge that we had to deal with. But we, we took very, uh, long painstaking days between our design team and the clients and trying to resolve that and we we really like for you to approve <laughs> what we have proposed because it really would make the most sense for the project financially and the quality of living for the homeowners. You mentioned air conditioning multiple times there. So did you look at all alternative methods of running ductwork, whether it be square duct, fabricated metal duct, yes. chases in the walls. I mean, I'm we, assuming you did, but again, yes. I have to ask. Yes, we have looked at quite a few alternatives, you know, in addition to vaulting, running AC units and all the other systems, and we just felt that with the, what the floor to ceiling height would have to be in the addition would be so restrictive, especially given, given the stature of human beings these days as compared to the early 1920s um, or the early 1900s, it's just very difficult. It, it's, it's not like we're, we're trying to ask for a lot. We're not asking for four car garages. We're asking for a living space 
our clients have two children, you know, being able to pick them up and not be able to have to touch the ceiling with their hands as currently they do in the existing cockpit. So yes, we did take that into consideration. Okay. Was there a way to minimize the addition on the second level and still accomplish what the client's trying to accomplish as far as living space? Well, we did the best we can. And in terms of layout, if you look at the floor plan, um, we have clients that, so currently they have, they have two children um, and they're both professionals and they work from home. So in terms of the program, we worked with them very, very closely in what spaces they would require. Um, so they, they really need two offices and two bedrooms for their children with a bathroom and then a more flexible space up here for guests. But we did, um, and restricting um, the width. Also, construction-wise, if you have a one-story addition over here, it really, construction-wise, it makes sense just to bring that wall straight back instead of coming here, bumping in, and going in. On this side, uh, because of the existing width, right here, which we really did not want to impact too much. We had to bump this out in order to provide some living space, some family room space over here at the rear of the house. So we were really restricted by the existing width of the home, which we did not want to impact too much. So on, um, with the existing home, we're really only going through this portion of the first floor of the home. That's all I have for now. Commissioner Sutton. A fairly substantial uh, impact on the uh, existing uh, dwelling. Can you run down to us the nature of your details on how you're going to be able to historically differentiate uh, your massing and materiality for your additions uh, versus what is <coughs> going to be um, an, an, a part of the existing fabric of the existing structure? Okay. Um, first of because all, which, uh, because oh, you do speak of matching mm -hmm. um, and uh, a certain slavish degree of matching, particularly in this case, can really muddy the waters very, very quickly over the integrity of the existing structure. Okay. The elevations. So, first of all, we are dealing with a craftsman style home that has rather simple, uh, simple, simple materiality. So right now we were matching. We had discussed with the clients to change out um, as per Mr. Prokop's recommendation and changing out the scale of the siding. But I do have to say that um, we as a design team were under the impression that matching the exi existing was something that was a high priority. So if you'd like to see us mix up some of the, um, the material proportions in order to more differ differentiate more from the existing, we'd be very happy to do that. We don't have a problem with that. But we, I do have to say that as a design team, we, we are, um, we are now just learning that you do like comp more complementary <laughs> rather than completely matching the existing. So that this has been an education process. So we'd be happy to change things up, but we did have every intention to match the existing, but that is something that can be rather easily um, remedied by going back and doing some redesign on the siding or um, the overhang, which you had mentioned previously. Well, actually, that's not necessarily entirely the case of the comment. Um, there, the requirement is a similarity. Okay. okay. 
And, and even if, as part of the design group uh, and the owner group, want to be able to say, yes, we want to be able to match this as closely as possible to the existing, we understand where that comes from. Okay. What we don't see here is evidence of a demark, if you will, between what is new and what is existing to the point where you can differentiate mm -hmm. very easily what is new and what is existing. We're not even talking about sight lines at this point in time, what you can see or cannot see. But what, you know, where and how are you planning on making uh, that statement of separation? Okay. Well, I think basically the site plan shows, um, well, you know what, let's show the SketchUp model. We're looking. Um, because the, the, um, the addition is so far back and does come out, I mean, there is, there is a demarcation in terms of location. You're no longer within the wall plane of the existing the historic structure. With the, um, when you're walking down the street, the primary focus is on that historic structure. So the, I mean, this is what it looks now, looks like now, and this is what it would look like with the addition in the back. You can even see a little bit. I can't see it because the closed captions on there, but I'm going to point from here. But you can see that there is a halfway decent line of sight that goes straight back to where um, an accessory structure, if they would ever want to propose one. So there is a line of sight all the way back to the back of the property. The port of Cachere really does um, add some visual interest and keep your eye on the historic property and distracts from the addition in the back. But if it is a turn, if it is a situation of materiality, we can definitely go and revisit that and not have a problem with changing that. That is all I have for this moment. Thank you. Commissioner Prokop. Um, I'm gonna ask like the obvious question. What is the second floor ceiling height proposed at the addition? Nine feet. The same ceiling, floor to ceiling height that is on the first floor. On the first floor, I understand. Yes. But eight foot is it adequate? If you it's would children's, like, children's if, bedroom. If you would, children grow. <laughs> if, I understand. If you would like us to lower lower it, um, is it possible to go to eight foot three? I, I, I'm asking. We we yes. thought about that. But is it possible? If, is it possible to mitigate? Yes, a it's possible. Bit well, to we kind we of meet halfway. Right. We're okay. Well, we we have thought. Yes, it's possible. Everything is possible. So we were thinking, eight 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 feet is a tad bit restrictive. But if it's the difference between approving and disapproving the project, we we would do that. Of well, course, we have to come in here and and see what is going to be most also most cost effective for a project of this scale. They love their home. They love the historic nature of the home. They love the location. This is a family that wants to stay and grow within right. that home. So to have a restrictive ceiling height can, can be difficult uh, but, for them. But obviously so we came in asking for what we would like. That's and the it, bone of contention. <laughs> you know, we all, we all that see is. that that's the bone of contention okay. right now. Okay. Um, and the other thing about the four foot bump out as I noticed in the floor plans, that the actual corners facing the street of the, uh, in the floor plans of that bump out are closets. Are what? They're closets. Closets. Yeah, on the floor plans, the actual front oh, closet. corner of, oh, a closet. of the floor plan. That, there is an existing closet out there, there now. There is right now. It's a yes. two-foot closet, it's a utility closet, you know, yes. you know rakes and Correct. whatnot. Um, but, I'm just thinking from a design standpoint, have you maybe looked at maybe notching that a little bit so that there's a, there's a little step 
I see. You know, go from two feet, then go to four feet and okay. have a little tiny step in the closets or something else like that, that also might mitigate a little bit of the, yeah. the contention about the, the visual. We can, um, well, as you can see, we've talked, um, the, the kitchen goes all the way back. Currently, there's, there's a lot of difficulty with their refrigeration. Their laundry room and their refrigerator is in this location currently. Right. So we're now putting the laundry room on this side. That's what is going to be contained within the one story. So okay. now we were left with refrigeration. So we need the depth here. But because of the restrictive width of the existing home and you know, the existence of you know, their utility closet in the back, actually electrical, the electrical panel is in that closet. Right. That's what's there. Right. I did not mark it on the floor plans. Okay. So that's the reason why I think we bump this out in order to accommodate a sofa. But I understand. I'm just saying maybe the closet could be notched on both floors. A little bit. That make it just helps that transition and reduces the visual bulk of that okay. down the drive aisle thing. Okay. Just, just something to think about. Um, okay. I, I don't think I have any other questions. I think those are the two. You know, those are the two real major issues. You know going on um, I don't think I have anything else question uh, one more comment about that the project on Deckel we we were just very surprised to discover that that project does have a bump out on the drive side that's six feet so that if I understand that that so. project that property does not have a poor cashier is that correct I don't believe it does, no. So okay. the porta cochere would make a big difference? I think I would believe that the porta cochere would to do, help filter the view. I'm just going to answer your question and then okay. move on to another sure. question. But um, it has to do with the styles of the particular properties that you bring forward and the one that you particularly are you know, here to present for. And it, it can make a difference in how it is viewed. Okay. So I just want to let you know that it does depend on the style and that's why understanding whether or not they have port shares if they actually have elements that are similar they're much more meaningful okay so, um, I wanted to ask if you have building sections and most specifically one that shows the uh, gable end of the cockpit at the rear and that new addition so something that cuts Mm -hmm. The building straight down through yes correct. Do you oh. have that building? Section? I do not have that building section. Do you have a wall section that shows well, that the, condition? Yes, the wall sections are not over those. Here. They look very generic. I do not. Okay. Um, I believe you had a demo plan. This looks like this is existing and proposed. Did you have a demo plan of the yes. first floor and the second floor? Okay. Can we zoom in just a tad, please? Because it's a little hard to see the line differential between a solid and a dash at okay. the yes. scale. Can we get down? There we go. Okay, I still can't. Um, okay. Could you shade in? Pull that down a little bit, please. Um, if you could at the top portion where the family room and the bedroom number two are, indicate shade in the walls that are remaining the walls in the project. It's hard for me to see the existing that's going to stay. This, this is remaining. OK. This is remaining. OK. This is remaining. OK. All through here. Um, on this side, the windows are staying. This is demo. This is already open. This is demo. There's a little knee wall in here. This is that existing outdoor closet right, right here. So this is this is demo. All of that is demo. All that and that is an addition or that used to be a sun porch. Right, right. So really Can you put the proposed plan next to this 
Yes. Please, thank you. Okay. Just the first, next to the first is what I'm looking for. Okay. So this is the wall. This I know is, they're at different scales. But you, yeah, you they're know, different scales. We're, we're designers, so we can make some assumptions. <laughs> Um, so you're actually taking out the left wall. Um, this one, yes. Yeah. Now that I'm looking, yes, that's coming out. So you're taking out that. Okay. And then you're right, right taking out. There's just a door that goes. That is the window opening. Right. Here. That's the only thing that you're taking is the window and making that a door opening. Yes. And then you're reconfiguring the entire stair, is that correct? Yes, the stair has to be reconfigured because it doesn't meet code. And right now it's, it's quite dangerous. It's very steep and narrow. So we, we are proposing to widen the stair. Is that stair wider than necessary for code requirements? I believe it is. I, I think the owners have a new baby and I think they're sometimes getting up and down very steep, steep stairs. They want the stairs to I be understand. more comfortable. I okay. I have no questions at this time. I just needed some clarifications. Um, okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Could you go back to the square footages? Yes. And just clarify the amount that we're adding compared to what the okay. cockpit area is currently. All right. So, okay. I'm going to have to bring this up to my eye height to take a look at this because it's a little blurry. I have a second one, if you give me one second. Yeah. It looks as though we're adding 729 square feet. It's also on here, too. It's also on this page. Existing first floor is 1248. Existing second floor is 672. So the existing cockpit square footage is 672 and we're adding 729. On the second floor. On, on the, the second floor. On the first floor you're adding 715? Yes. Okay. And that kind of in block form kind of looks like this. Yeah, something just doesn't seem to be adding up there. Okay. All right. There's a mathematical error. Is it that the one story is not added in there? So you would, if the second floor is 729 and we're mimicking the size on the first floor, but we're also taking up some of the, we're also taking up some of the existing right. first floor. And it may be right, just something seems off. Yeah. All right, and then the other question I have is, is it safe to say that the ridge height is an additional one foot nine inches above what's there now? If the ce you said the ceiling height is going to be nine foot, so yes. is that a direct Correct. correlation? Yes. That's all I had. Any 
other questions for the applicant? I have no further question. Okay. No. All right, you have uh, five minutes for rebuttal. Um, I don't think I have very much. I think we've gone over this very complicated project in detail. I would like to say that um, if you would like us to make some compromises in the details of the exterior cladding of the building in order to differentiate the addition to the existing structure, we'd be very happy to revisit that and um, propose something, something different. Um, we do ask that you approve um, the height difference in, um, on the second story in order to accommodate the floor to ceiling height in the addition. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing and we'll discuss the case. <laughs> oh, the elephant in the room, I'll throw it out there. Um, I have an issue with the massing. I feel like we're adding, if the numbers are correct, we're adding over 50% over and beyond you know, what, what's already there. The height, we're almost two, two foot above the existing ridge. Um, and then the bump out, we're already two foot out. I realize that was a previous addition. I think or it may not have been an addition. It may have been uh, in a porch that was enclosed or something. That, possibly. I don't think that was clear. Um, it, yeah, it, I'm thinking it was one of these addition prior permits that were pulled, but um, four foot impeding into that port of like that just seems a little overreaching. Uh, you know, there's some aspects that are, that are nice and I'm sympathetic to the reasoning behind the design, yeah. but unfortunately I do have some, some issues with the sight lines and just the overall massing I think is what's really throwing. throwing well, throwing. Well, I mean, I, I'd like, I'd just like to say the, all the massing is in the back, you know, from a, from a visual standpoint, all the massing is this two-story addition is all pushed as far back as possible beyond the existing house, you know, basically starting at the existing house. They're leaving the existing house intact um, to, a, to a great extent and then adding a two-story addition at the back, which I think is, is less offensive than, you know, other ways you could do it. Um, but, you know, I, I, I understand that, you know, it, it's also, there's precedent for those two-story additions in the back. I mean, there's precedent throughout the neighborhood. I would, I would like to point out that some of the um, examples in your right, they did show some examples that, that showed that, you know, um, additions at the back of uh, an airplane-type bungalow um, can be done. In the examples that were presented today, most if not all of them showed that there was some deference to the form of the original primary structure, including the cockpit, mm -hmm. by um, recessing and then falling backwards. There are ways that that addition that was presented today could be done in a similar manner to allow the original form to have a little bit more breathing room. Um, in addition to the massing, I just think there's a deference that doesn't exist and um, enough differentiation. We can talk about materiality, but in all honesty, you could, you could paint it red and it would still be a problem in terms of the form and the mass. And um, uh, I also feel like um, on the, and I can't remember which direction it is, on the west elevation, where we have the one story addition, then the two story, the alignment of that of that wall edge, I understand the construction, you know, it makes sense. Been there, done that. I've been accused too much of putting uh, too many recesses and not straight enough lines. Um, but when it comes to trying to be a little bit more differential um, to a historic property, um, that is one elevation as well that I feel like there could be a little bit more mass differentiation there. Um, 
the other concern is that um, we've we've had these conversations before in properties like this. Um, how much existing store structure and materials is palatable in terms of its removal and destruction? Um, there's a fairly significant amount of wall that's going away, and then structure. So. Structure we don't see, but um, if someone were to come back in and say, I want to restore this to its natural or its um, historic features and outline, it's a much more difficult thing for them to do that, right? Especially on the northwest corner where that, um, that master bath is going in. So I, I, there are a couple things, the massing, um, the height, and then the historic materials. For me. Typically, with a, in a, typically with the, with additions of this uh, sort of nature, uh, you know, the, 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 the Department of Interior guidelines are, are very, very, very um, explicit about them being as inconspicuous and as subordinate as possible. Right. And with the exception of taking not all, but a significant portion of this addition towards as far back as possible, I still don't see a maximum effort in making this a subordinate addition to what is relatively a, a very comfortable but still modest dwelling. And that bothers me because I think they did a very, very good job together a presentation of precedent, whether or not we may feel individually that the precedent is totally applicable or partially applicable. Right. But the presentation on that scale was very, very well done, and I wish we would have that from more people. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, that's, that's laudable, without a doubt. That's a lot yeah. of work, yeah. and, 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 it's, and it's very clear that there's, there's just, you mentioned it, and it's true, and I can't put my finger on it. There's just something wrong with the massing. Yeah, I just, I, again, I, I think she may have hit the nail on the head with the straight lines typically are what we're looking for. Or on the pork for sure side, in, in yes. In design, that's what people are looking for. But because the massing, it, it's, it, it is back, but it almost seems like it's coming forward. Mm -hmm. It's, it's getting wrapped around. And, and so that it, it's, it's engulfing, in, in, from my eyes, when I'm looking at it, it's engulfing the main historic structure and without some sort of delineation or, or step, if you will, in, it just seems like it's, it's almost eating. So you're, you're thinking <laughs> it, 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 it would, the first floor addition, the one story addition to the side should be differentiated from the two-story addition. I just feel like there's a way there's to potentially to achieve articulation or something. Trying to achieve with the needed square footage. I'm not sure they can achieve the head height upstairs that they're looking for without getting really creative with some mechanical systems potentially. You know, I'm not privy to all that information, so you well, know, we, I don't know about we, that. But we didn't even discuss whether or not the ground floor, the floor plan, the first floor ceiling could drop a little and there'd be a differentiation between the floor levels so well, that the top of the roof uh, ridge could level out and still have higher ceilings on the, you know, on the second floor, but then the first floor ceilings were going I, to be I honestly lower. think that there are precedents, and I think there was at least one that was shown tonight, that show that you can do it with a different ridge height. But it has to do with how well you understand being differential. And that means allowing the historic structure to have its place. And right now, I think the word engulfing is a really appropriate word for this project. Um, I think there are ways, just by manipulating the yeah. massing that was shown to us today and thinking about the joining at the rear of the property, of the, the structure, 
looking at your case studies, because there's some hints in there and allegations that I think could lead you to the right path. Um, the joinings not only at the rear, but the sides as well. Yeah, obviously, yeah, as we've been talking about the ins and the outs. And but the, there was discussion that the quote unquote hardship, why they couldn't make it narrower and make it deeper, was because of the pool. But it's not, it's not against the pool. Yeah. Yeah, it's I would, not there yet. I would agree with that. And there was some, there was some delineation in, in um, some response to the edge of the pool, but it seemed like there was some opportunity still left in the site plan to perhaps revisit that notion um, and maybe look at some precedents within the neighborhood as well when it comes to that condition. Um, I do understand about clearances and safety for children. Completely understand that. Um, but there are ways to accommodate all of those needs and then think about how the mass. Because I think you can still get the square footage you need for the program and live with the site and, and be you know, well, more accommodating to the structure, I mean. On that floor plan where that two foot you know, bumps out, if I was looking at the floor plan correctly, you had a, an area that was already existing that has a refrigerator that's gonna roughly be three foot deep, I mean. Right. Well, right. currently it's a, it's a climb I'm from sorry. the- I'm um, sorry. We, um, even though- Sorry. I'm asking questions. He's looking at yeah, me, I thought I had to, to respond. You, so you're not so asking you, questions. Oh, okay. That's more of a rhetorical, um, he's trying to work gotcha. it out. <laughs> but, but then you've got the two foot, so you've got four and a half, five feet there. Right. So maybe, is there a way to just nudge that prop, that room back instead of out to get that square footage? Now you're kind of wrapping that pool. There may even be some opportunity there to to accent that from the living room. Now you see your pool. I, mean, I would say yes, and that's that's for them to entertain. Right, absolutely. Right. Um, so I'm just kind of throwing that out there as we're talking this through, but I, I think that seems to be the sticking point is you have a square footage need that your client is looking for, and so I think unfortunately. It's just not very it's, yeah. it's, it's not. It, it, it can be. It can be massaged. I agree. And that one story. There's some massaging that needs to happen, including the one story addition. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've done a lot of work on this. Obviously, I mean, this is this is a, a complicated project. Absolutely. Um, and the you know the this is not an easy form style yeah. to deal <laughs> no. with. I mean most 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 second stories of this style are the lower ceiling. We've seen it before, but yeah. we've also seen it done successfully. So we know yeah. the examples exist. You just have to. Yeah. They um, just need to spend a little bit more time on it. Yeah. <laughs> so. I I in terms of the floor plan. We don't know that information, right? Because I could I could see how if this addition proposal were to say this is the known historic building line, you know, the face of the of the original dwelling, and we are building everything, almost everything we can behind this line. Behind it, right? Beyond it, we would be having a different discussion. I think, I think that, we'd still think be dealing with a massing. We'd issue. still be dealing with yeah. massing. That the, the the idea of what part of the existing building's fabric going away to make this addition happen right. is 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 a sticking point. Correct. Correct. That we really don't have enough working information to work with. Yeah, I mean, understand. the idea the idea we we don't we don't know what is historic and what is not because we don't know what that addition is, what the date of the addition is. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's an enclosed porch or anything else like that, and you know, obviously one of the 
the, the guidelines and national or the interior department guidelines are, are you know it's kind of like the medical profession first do no harm to the original fabric you know or do additions and renovations in such a way that the original fabric isn't destroyed and it can be restored back to its original condition that's one of the key components agreed um, so I, I want to ask um, is there a request before us. It Absolutely. seems that we do have a request before <laughs> us. So I'm going to go ahead and let you. Um, do I have to reopen? No, I don't have to reopen. It. Just ask. Are you, are you asking to continue? This? Correct. Okay. And what's the next public hearing? So, in, in consultation with the agent, um, they're requesting to continue to February the 6th, 2023 okay. at 5 30 p.m. Okay. Thank you. I have Thank a motion, you. please, to continue the case to February 6, 2023. I move to grant a continuation in case ARC 22.501. I have that correct? Uh, for the property located at. Oh, I'm go to a different page for that one. Excuse me. 1807 West Walters Avenue in the Hyde Park Historic District to the public hearing of February 6th, 2023 at 5.30 in this room. I second. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand indicating so. Aye. aye. Motion carries support. Thank you very much. See you next yeah. year. Yes, yeah, see you next year. <laughs> Have a wonderful holiday. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. We are adjourned. See you Wednesday.